Cool. So, yep, my name is Ben Robles. Um, so I'm doing a mountain bike jersey, which actually I'm wearing right now. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So this is it, and we'll, we'll go. We'll go through it. So this is the first slide, yeah. So why did I choose this project? Um, well, I wanted to do something with cycling. Um, I have a big, big passion for it. Uh, it's been around my entire life. Um, my dad used to race pro, and that's me right there meeting. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Greg Menard is, but he's like the most decorated downhill racer of all time. And this, this was before he even like went on that winning streak. Um, and then this is me up here. I think I was like eight years old when I was doing some downhill expo with my dad. So um, here's my one of my engagement pictures. So mm -hmm. has bikes. Uh, this is just Crested Butte. And I now uh, coach as well uh, for Boulder Junior Cycling. So, so yeah, I wanted to do something with cycling uh, related. Also, I wanted to go um, into the cycling industry after, um, after graduation. So. I wanted to pick up some new skills or something along those lines. Um, so yeah, I wanted to challenge myself. So I chose to do something with sewing because I have, I was brand new to sewing. I've never even touched the sewing machine or or anything like that. Uh, so originally I picked a a like ultra light packable like wind and and rainproof jacket for mountain biking just so I could like mm -hmm. really stick it in my pocket and go and because I have some but they're thicker. They're just not as packable, so I wanted to go something uh, like this. They just spit in my hand. Um, so I got started. And I started. Uh, I just dove right in and started sewing before I like got into the fabrics and all the stuff. So I got some practice fabrics, and then I actually sewed a little vest for my dog, uh, just to mm -hmm. get to some some stitch patterns and how to use the machine and and all that stuff. How to cut out patterns with like scissors and stuff and use them to cut the at the fabric and so here's how it turned out it's a little tight around the around the back and the shoulders uh, but it didn't seem to mind it too much um, but after doing this I realized that um, oh, I also researched what fabric I would use for that ultralight uh, packable jacket and it would be some sort of like Pertix uh, fabric which is uh, some sort of nylon blend which uh, it's really really light and it is harder to work with so after this first initial try and then researching the fabric I thought that might take a little longer um, especially with the features of like the packability that I wanted to do uh, as far as with the scope of the class so I actually pivoted just a little bit um, still stuck with the biking apparel um, but I chose to do a jersey a slash like t-shirt for mountain biking and this actually went pretty well because uh, after doing some research of some aesthetics, I landed on action painting, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second. But I did an initial initial draw up of the of the patterns that I would cut out and what I wanted the shirt to kind of look like. Um, so the reason why I chose this aesthetic of action painting um, was because it would be really um, exemplary of, of Splash and Mud, which I wanted in the back, but action painting was actually coined, uh, like the term action painting was coined by um, Harold Rosenberg in 1952 in an essay he did for um, the American Painters. I forgot exactly the title of the essay, but he coined the term, and then for the next two decades, the redefinition of art uh, became really prominent as a process rather than product. And I thought that was really cool. So this new definition of art as an action rather than an object would fit perfectly with what I wanted to do on the back of the shirt. Because you can see how this is the action of them throwing the paint. And you can even see it right here is very similar splash patterns to just water and mud, which uh, you get on the back of your, your jersey um, on spring riding for sure. Um, and this is, this is me and a friend in Crested Butte. So I went, went right in with the shirt design and I got some fabric. It was just 100% cotton. Um, and I went to town and just this took a while because I was 
you know, I would do a stitch and then I would mess it up. So I have to like unstitch it with the little unstitching tool and all, and it took a while. Um, but I finally got the first prototype done and I learned a ton. The fabric was not stretchy enough. This was more like a button down um, style fabric. Um, and then the neck was definitely the hardest part to do. Um, I just use the same fabric, but I think it's better to do with a neck band. But I couldn't find any at Walmart because everybody raid also the uh, sewing aisle making you know masks and stuff so actually i got all my supplies before walmart ran out of of their their um their fabrics um so with all this stuff i learned i went to to the second prototype i only had so much fabrics that i had bought and this was actually the fabric i wanted to use which which is this guy so you can tell it's a lot more stretchy um <clears throat> and so yeah anyway I started um cutting the patterns out just like I wanted to and then I sewed them together um and then finally I got the shirt just like like this the neck still was even the second prototype was just really hard to do um again I didn't have a neck band so I tried to do the best that I could with what I had uh so it looks a little funky I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera screen um but it works something definitely to improve um and then i moved on to my aesthetic um so i was gonna do you know that mud action painting so actually in one of, in the design review i think it was ben that gave me the idea to do the to maybe grab a tire and do and do a pattern like this so i went to the bike shop that i work at and just grabbed an old um shrubby tire and cut it up and I put the black paint on it and then I just rolled it across the back. And then for the splashing, I actually use a zip tie, which is very appropriate because we use zip ties all the time in, uh, in biking. <laughs> you always gotta have some with you. Uh, but yeah, it actually ended up pretty good uh, applying. I would just kind of grab the zip tie, dip it in the paint, and then just kind of smear it across like if doing that same motion of the of, uh, like inward to outward splash of the mud. This is the fabric paint I use. It's a uh, permanent and it's you know, water-based, non-toxic by Tulip. Um, so yeah, after I got done, I waited 72 hours for it to dry. And then this is what it, the pattern ended up looking like. So the tire, and I wanted to use a bunch of colors just because action painting usually involves a lot of colors. Plus, um, since it was black and gray, I wanted to add some pop to it. Um, so yeah, there's me wearing it with my bike. Um, and actually, if you guys can see it, I'm wearing it now. <laughs> so you can see the pattern. But um, yeah, I was really pleased with it. Uh, it fits really nice. The only thing I did, um, I didn't pre-wash the fabric. So it shrunk a little bit vertically. So I made it big for, for, um, for biking. So it didn't shrink like past to where I can, I can still wear it. Um, but it definitely shrunk less. I mean, more than I wanted it to. Um, so yeah. Um, so what's next and a few takeaways, takeaways of the project and the class. So as far as for the shirt, um, yeah, it's done. Um, what's next is I'm just going to wear it and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, really light fabric that I picked. So it's very breathable. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to wear a bike in. Um, things that I would do differently would be the neck. I'm going to definitely improve on that. Um, and then now with this new found skills I can work on, I wanted to do a backpack as well. And, I, and I'm going to do that rain jacket eventually uh, once I can get fabric for it and be practicing. Um, as far as takeaways, um, obviously, the uh, given ones from the class, I... From my upcycle project, I got to learn a bunch from um, curl draw and laser cutting. Um, I got a ton of experience there, which was very practical. And from this project, I got a ton of experience sewing. So those are some skill takeaways from the class. But as far as something a little bit more profound that I took away from the class was that I typically overplan. I tend to try to be very precise and like optimal with uh, with my time and, and how to do things. And actually with both projects, I just dove right in and started like failing and messing up and getting like more materials and just keep trying. And I actually 
um, learn really quickly. So uh, I know this has been said before, but definitely fail, fail often, learn quick um, would be some takeaways from the class. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the class and I enjoyed, enjoyed working on my two projects. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening to my presentation and um, 